Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 224. 224. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. Free dining packages for Walt Disney World have been announced for dates this fall. This is a time to check out those deals because they can disappear so quickly. And there are other Disney deals also available. If you go to their website, you can uh, check that out and book with them. Absolutely. Also, the AllEars.net weekly newsletter. This week is the Bits and Bytes issue, which catches everyone up on the month. Uh, And in this issue, they're going to be talking about, or they are talking about, Club 33, um, the history of it, and mentioning uh, how the new clubs are coming, well, probably to Walt Disney World. Yeah, all kinds of new clubs coming, that's true. And uh, Steve Barrett is a regular in Bits and Bytes and shares recent hidden Mickey alerts, this time focusing on the Magic Kingdom. And they have a souvenir section highlighting the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival merchandise and tips, magical moments, more, including even refurbishments and such. You know, things that you should know before visiting uh, Walt Disney World and the Disney parks. Check out the show notes for full information, how to subscribe. It is a free newsletter. We subscribe ourselves. Lots of great information to be found. And we are starting with the characters on Easter Sunday. We're doing a little catch-up. Yes. A little catch-up here. Uh, It wasn't too long ago, just last Sunday. And uh, we headed first to Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. I wanted to check out the eggs inside as well. And and Mickey and Minnie uh, were greeting. Bright and early. What a what a great way to start Easter Sunday. How awesome. I mean, look at those outfits. They remind me very much of their Christmas outfits, too, when we saw them at the Grand. And this is traditionally the first resort we stop at because we always like seeing Mickey and Minnie in these particular outfits. And uh, there they are. There you are meeting them. And here's a recommendation. If you do go there next year, the lines only get longer. So the earlier, the better to meet the Big Cheese and the Mrs. Big Cheese. Well, it it really isn't for a very long period of time, probably a couple of hours. And they swap off, don't they? With the White Rabbit. rabbit. Correct. So uh, it's it's really fun to see uh, the different characters at the resorts if you have it. Uh, you know, have a chance. He really has become a Easter tradition for us. And here is the white rabbit now. Right. And uh, we mentioned they swap off for a couple of hours. And uh, so it was fun. We didn't meet the white rabbit this time. I don't think we've ever met the white rabbit there. Uh, <laughs> well, we it's, always it's wait hard for Mickey to meet and Minnie. Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> you have to time it just right. But we headed over to Disney's Polynesian Village. And here comes Chip and Dale. And I guess for them, their Easter attire is that one uh, lay, their festive Easter lay. Yeah, they have put a lot of effort into their costumes there. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, the, the, so hula hoop, the hula hoop skills of Chip here was uh, quite impressive, I think. Well, I thought it was interesting how quickly they made it over to Disney's Contemporary Resort as well. And they, they dressed up for that. Yeah. And you'll see, you will see that uh, very soon. But it's, you know, it's fun to see the different characters. Uh, we only went to these few resorts and there's all, I think most of the resorts, if not all of them, had uh, different characters on Easter, not just in the morning, but uh, That's some of them new. Yeah, also new in the afternoon. That's new, yeah, new this year, like the All-Stars and uh, places Quarterly's. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, we'll have to remember that next year. I think we were just pretty wiped out from, we had just returned on from Friday, the big uh, three and then we went trip, so yes. Then, then we had a big day on Easter uh, being out, including at the Magic Kingdom. There is Dale there showing his uh, festive Easter lay, and I think we're going to see Mrs. Easter Bunny herself. I don't know why they don't put both Mr. and Mrs. Easter Bunny here. I mean, if you have Mrs. Easter Bunny, I mean, you know. Well, Mr. Easter Bunny was at the Contemporary, which we did not make. He, oh, he made was a he quick there? Appear- they had to, we were told they had to make make it over to the, the Magic, uh, the Magic Kingdom, Kingdom, right, to start parade. at 11 o'clock, something like that. So not, I, a, he, not a lot of time for the bunnies. And they kind of look like Chippendale. Well, so. Chip and J- <laughs> there are Chippendale. Again, I had mentioned they have dressed up in their Easter finest and quickly ran over to the contemporary and they they stopped pretty quickly last year i think they went on another hour or so so uh when we got there they were about done yeah luckily we made it in time just for a quick just, to see just a quick hello mm-hmm. and, and then watch them walk away <laughs> but i'm glad we did it so now we're going to jump ahead a little bit to this past weekend it was the star wars half marathon and the contemporary had some really nice chocolate star wars eggs on display well first they had easter eggs and they have already disappeared from disney Disney's Contemporary Resort, and now uh, just for the weekend uh, for the Star Wars Marathon, Mm -hmm. half uh, half marathon, they had a variety of Star Wars items here. Some of them we recognized from uh, Easter uh, displays, but I didn't, 
I didn't recognize all of them. So I'm assuming a few items were made especially for this. This one seems to be the Princess Leia egg. Uh, I, I don't recall seeing it on Easter, but I could be wrong. There were a lot more on display for Easter Sunday. Right. And Easter Sunday was different this year in that they have the security now on the fourth floor. Right. So they scattered the eggs about. Um, so... I don't remember this from previous years, and I didn't see it this year, so I'm not sure. And this one, I, I don't think I've ever seen it as well. Yeah, I'm not so sure. It's, uh, you know, there's just so many to keep track of. They, they have so many eggs. I believe I've seen Boba, uh, Boba Fett. Fett, yes. 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 And I think the other one we're about to see. The Millennium Falcon one correct, we have correct. seen. But I don't remember uh, the Mickey. But it was really fun uh, to have them all grouped together. And I think also the lightsabers are new. Um, so at least half of them may be new. This was the first Star Wars egg ever right, right there. That's, I remember that from many years ago. That's the one uh, I remember seeing first. And uh, so anyway, I thought it was nice that f just for the uh, Star Wars half marathon weekend that they had a little something uh, for the runners right. and everybody to enjoy. Absolutely. So now we're going to move on and take a look at the new security enhancements uh, going into the Magic Kingdom. So there's uh, new new security, not only here, like on the way to Disney's Contemporary Resort and here at the Magic Kingdom, uh, security has changed a lot, but also at the resorts where each monorail station, uh, you have to go through security now uh, to get to the monorail. And so we went through the security probably three or four times that day. Right. So even if you're just going from one resort to another, Every time you get off and back on the monorail, it is through security again. Again, not that big of a deal, but it does make things a lot better when you get here to the Magic Kingdom. Also, if you take a monorail from Epcot, since technically you're already through security, you don't have to go through it again when you get here to the Magic Kingdom. You just walk right in, and it was a beautiful day, another beautiful day. Look at Mickey just sort of pops with those flowers. But on the way back to Epcot, they have not fixed that in a, such a way where you can just walk into Epcot. You have to go through security again, even though you've been through it and now we're going to talk about wishes 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 ends very soon on may 11th so we're looking at just a couple weeks at, at this point and they have farewell merchandise i don't know why we didn't have merchandise while it was going just like you know well, you like, had the cd i think that's about all you had was the cd before like why not illuminations wishes you know the different shows world of color it would be great to be able to have this level of merchandising for all of them but now that it's going, right. there is. Oh, the, it's very <laughs> it's very nice stuff. That's the pass holder, the exclusive pass holder shirt on the left there. And that's the standard shirt again. A nice Tervis mug, a uh, hat. Uh, here is a Christmas ornament. I think I bought just about one of all of it for myself. It's really nice stuff. And Happily Ever After begins on May 12th. And uh, new also, they have merchandise out for Guardians of the Galaxy uh, two, which debuts on May 5th, 2017. You have the, you know, you know how much everybody loved Baby Groot. Like yes. that was the star. I think Baby Groot was a star of the show of the first Guardians. And now uh, you can get almost anything Baby Groot plus a lot, a lot more. Yeah, Guardians is very popular, almost taking over for uh, Star Wars in amount of merchandise in the Emporium. And it's always fun to sort of light off all the little Baby Groots. I'm sure they appreciate yes, I that. See. I know they appreciate that in the Emporium. So, but, um, oh, there's a baby mug. I love that. Mug. The, cup, the cup is cool. And I, I, thought, like that. I thought that the mug did not look like a ceramic type one, but it is. And, uh, of course, you have more merchandise. So the difference between Guardians of the Galaxy, though, and, uh, and Star Wars is Star Wars probably will stay right. always It'll, at the same correct. level. Um, so, anyway, in Liberty Square, they have a ticket office now. I believe that opened in early March, and we had been gone for several weeks and hadn't been to the Magic Kingdom in uh, in March right. or early April. New to us. This was a store selling Halloween merchandise. It used to sell Heritage House. President uh, merchandise for one point. Uh, it's had a lot of changes. Wasn't it like a private uh, pass holder area for a short time? I, you know, I don't even, rem I don't remember everything. I mean, you, we've gotten treats here during the Halloween party. This was oh, yeah. the, the yes. Heritage House and they did sell presidential items for a very long time. Maybe presidential items are you know, not that well, popular. Well, they, they, moved, they moved the presidential items to the Christmas store. There's a small oh, little a section little in the Christmas store. And I think in America also. Let's at, talk about Epcot. I Can. You met I Can yesterday. Okay, well, I didn't actually meet I Can. Okay, I Can is the new robot in Tomorrowland. I don't know how long the robot will be here. Um, it, it just, uh, he just started a few days ago. 
and uh, there's no published schedule, just like even the, the Muppets uh, mobile app doesn't have a published schedule. Well, somehow you knew he was going to be coming on, though. Did you just ask a cast member then? I, I asked somebody who I knew would know <laughs> oh, while I was there. And um, so anyway, he talks with guests. He plays music. Um, he interacts with everybody. So he seemed to be pretty popular. He reminds me of Push in a way, but I think I prefer Push. I think Push was more, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of liked Push. Well, I, you know, there, I, don't, I guess it doesn't really remind me of Push because Push w wasn't a person. It was a trash can. And I think Push is still at Disneyland Paris sometimes, so I, I don't think I saw him this We did trip. not see him. Um, Definitely not. But, you know, this one actually interacts with guests, talks with guests. So, I mean, they're really very different. Like, I wouldn't even compare uh, the two. And I have seen others, though, mentioning this could be something where we'll see this type of robot maybe for Star Wars land mm -hmm. at some point. So, unfortunately, I did not make it out to see him in person yesterday. I was working on uh, editing this show. But uh, was he popular? Did he seem to go over well with the other guests? Yeah, he had a big crowd most of the time. You know, guests would stop for a couple minutes and you know, and either interact with him or watch others interact with him. It was interesting that he didn't seem to know what a camera was or an iPhone. You would think he'd be related to an iPhone well, somehow. Well, he actually asked earlier of somebody about a camera. So um, he seemed to sometimes know what it was, but then all of a sudden he didn't know what it was. Yeah. So I think he was just, you know, joking that he didn't. For a technical <laughs> robot, you would think he would be well aware of all future or current devices. But anyway, that's about it for the Magic Kingdom. Although you said there were some big changes since uh, Easter when we shot these, uh, these clips. Well, there was a lot of construction and, you know, it just looked like a lot is going on right now. I don't want to say construction, but a lot of work going on in the Magic Kingdom, probably just kind of right now between uh, now and the really the start of summer. And here is another change. We're jumping over to Disney Springs. You can see Characters in Flight has a new ticket office, a new look to it. Well, it's the same ticket office, but they're updating it, you know, for, I guess, for Disney Springs. I kind of like the old one, though, and I like the old balloon, but... I mean, I'm, it's starting to grow on me. Um, so now we're heading already to the dress shop, which is called the dress shop. <laughs> <laughs> Something new that we missed when at we Disney were away. Springs. Yes. And this is at the co-op. And they started with 10 dresses just a few weeks ago. We were in Paris at the time when it opened. And now they only have like four or five dresses available. They will have, um, we were told maybe in a couple months, more stock. Certainly that could change, like if Disney, you know, somehow does a rush order. There were dresses like, um, this one is Small World, but Orange Bird, Tiki Room, and uh, other similar dresses. Uh, there was some Haunted Mansion. We have Minnie Mouse, but very limited size right now. So they made this big splash a few weeks ago uh, with this dress shop, and then they have the accessories, but so many of the dresses are already out of stock it was i guess it was a lot more popular than uh, than they expected well she said it surpassed all their expectations i mean things sold out on the very first day i guess it was a is a really uh, crowded exciting day so i mean i guess it took a year or so for this concept um this is what the disney parks blog said uh for them to get this concept developed so you would think they would have ordered more dresses <laughs> for the first day. But, you know, sometimes they over order, sometimes they under order. Hopefully they'll be able to restock, you know, a lot quicker than we were told maybe as late as July. But I'm hoping it'll be much sooner than that. And that was the Haunted Mansion design we just looked at. This is obviously uh, Minnie Mouse. I did ask if there will be uh, sort of men's matching type attire, like a Hawaiian shirt in the uh, Haunted, Haunted Mansion, Mansion or... style or the Tiki Room style or, or especially the Orange Bird style. And they are thinking about that, they said. So who knows? I would certainly buy a lot of this stuff if they had it in a men's version. Well, I, you know, I would not mind like an orange bird dress. I've heard the um, the tower one is maybe not as um, well fitted as some of the other dresses, but I like the tiki bird and the orange bird I think are very nice. But they didn't have those. What they did have were four or five dresses with accessories and uh, there is a uh, shadow box type thing up here showing how you can put together an outfit. Uh, so with the accessories, and you can see even a little concept art of the Tower of Terror and one of the dresses. Right, even the dresses that were sold out still had that uh, concept art uh, shadow box thing going, so it's worth it just to check that out. Now we're going back to Disneyland Paris for the 25th anniversary kickoff and one of our favorite things, the Inventions Character Breakfast. But first, we are taking a look at the kickoff of the Disneyland Paris 25th anniversary. We had personally just showed up that morning uh, 
at the airport. Yeah, so. yeah, we just flew in, so we missed the media kickoff. But luckily, our good friend Philip from DLRP Fans was there, and he provided this great video for us. So not only are we seeing characters, not the rare ones that we saw on the 12th that was for everybody, but, you know, different characters that you might find um, at the Disneyland Paris Resort, plus uh, the uh, Mickey, Minnie, Chip and Dale, they all are in their uh, 25th outfits, and a lot of them meet and greet with guests every day uh, at Disneyland Paris. Not Mickey, though. Mickey is, he does greet guests, but I don't, I haven't really seen him in his costume right. greeting guests on a daily basis. There is a lot of blue, a lot, a lot of blue, of blue it's involved like, in this celebration. It's like Disneyland in California did. Right. Well, that was for the 60th anniversary, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of silver. Anyway, we're seeing the uh, ambassadors for Disneyland Paris now, and they are uh, about to introduce the park president, Catherine Powell, who's going to say a few words and introduce Bob Chapek, who is the chairman of Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. He's going to talk all about what is uh, coming next for uh, Disneyland Paris for the 25th anniversary. And he also talked about Walt history in France and things like that. So it was it was quite an interesting talk and we will link to uh, to this full celebration on the DLRP fans their site. Their site, correct. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, you've got Tinkerbell, you know, up there and Tinkerbell is uh, while you don't see her in the I don't know if, is she in the parade? She's maybe in the parade just in her regular costume. Uh, you don't really see her in the this blue outfit on a daily basis. Very sparkly Tinkerbell. But there's like Tinkerbells everywhere. Like Tinkerbell is sort of the face of this uh, of this celebration. Correct. So now we are heading to Inventions Restaurant. This is at the Disneyland Hotel. Every Sunday they have an exquisite brunch. It's not inexpensive, but for what they offer, um, it is, I think, a pretty good deal. And you get 10 characters, generally, 8 to 10 characters uh, that you can meet. We ended up spending like two and a half, uh, maybe three hours here, just waiting for the 10th character to finally show up. But they have like the, not only the shrimp, but different seafood items. If you're a and seafood fan, and if you like cheeses, this is for you because there is quite the selection of both, but you have pasta, you have beef, you have chicken, everything you could ever want. You will not be hungry when you leave here. And also a tremendous selection of desserts. Just uh, the food is outstanding, but when you come to this brunch, you're not there for the food. You are there for the characters. And it was Cinderella themed. So uh, first we're gonna see Cinderella herself kind of introducing uh, what we're about to see. I was there for the food too. I like the food yeah, there. I was there for the food. <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining, but there's, so, there's 10 characters you're gonna see and you're afraid to leave to get food. At least I was because you don't want to miss any of these characters because they don't come out the one thing about disneyland paris and characters is they only come around one time right like if we're here at walt disney world we just you know you could just sit there all day and which then we have often done well no not all day but <laughs> you know by the time the last character comes you're you've got the first character you know on the way again but here i mean you really need to be there if you want to see the characters of course um so you have princess minnie here she is again you've got the cinderella theme going on we're going to see Donald Duck, who is not in a Cinderella thing. Donald theme. Duck is the only one who did not dress for the occasion. But he, you know, he's a devilish duck, that Donald. So Is that, is that I, what I he was? He, he is. wasn't dressed as anything. And they didn't you know. want my head on shrimp either. I tried to offer it to Chip here, but Chip, uh, you know, did not want any of that great food we talked about. So Chip and Dale were, I don't know if you'd say they were like jesters. They look uh, like jesters. I'm not sure how that is Cinderella shake? theme, but... Yes. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's still fun to see them in kind of unique costumes. Right here is matching Dale also as a jester. And they were very jovial as they always are. So I think they matched perfectly in those outfits. And it was fun because we had a bunch of tables around us that were only adults. Um, there were kids also in one table, but generally, you know, it's kind of nice when you don't feel like the only adult table. There was actually quite a few of them. Ah, look at, there's you making a little oh, cameo Oh, I don't need there. to be in the... Oh, and here is Prince Mickey, very royal in his attire. And I saw Alexi from... Uh, from ED92 also at the table behind us. Oh, so that that, was... that's a good spot of yours <laughs> there. But I have to mention there are two seatings. There is a one o'clock and a 245. And I can't stress enough, one o'clock is the way to go because you just want to make sure you have plenty of time. Here's Donald, who we mentioned did not dress for the occasion. Was it a 245? Because I, I mean, it really doesn't go on very long. So you definitely want to get there at the, for the first time. Like you wouldn't want to get there for the second because it took us the entire uh, time starting at one to get uh, 
to get to see everybody. Now this is a very, very rare character, somebody I have not seen since I was a very, very little kid. So that's Jock. So we saw both the Gus Gus and the jo and Jock. Well, Jock was first, and even you. Look how happy, nice big hug pictures going on for Jock, and he has a big nose, which he almost pushes right into my camera, and you will see that very soon. <laughs> so it, you know, everybody was very excited about them. Plus. Susie and Perla, who we'll also see in this. I mean, <laughs> see, this is why you can't leave to get food. It's good to come to this buffet because you don't eat as much. You you don't want to miss anything. And look at how cool is this Jacques and Gus Gus interacting. So again, if you're up at the buffet, you are missing out. Right, and you wouldn't see them probably again. Although. Uh, Gus Gus didn't actually show back up for like an hour after this. Like he uh, took a break and then uh, probably a very lengthy break. Right. There are times when uh, you definitely do have time to run up. And I guess this is uh, Susie. I believe this is Susie. And then uh, we also have Pearl Perla. coming. They like to stick their nose right into the lens, don't they? Right. And uh, so this was, you know what? It was just really a lot of fun. The one thing about the uh, character, uh, the brunch, is that you don't know ahead of time anymore what the theme will be. It used to be you'd know maybe a couple of months in advance, and so you could plan for that. But now, like, this was really a surprise for us. It's like you show up and then you know uh, who will be there. Right, but it was a good surprise. Apparently, the following week, it was an Alice in Wonderland-themed lunch. That would have been pretty cool. I would have, well, they had the March Hare. Right. There were so many uh, really great characters. There's Gus Gus, there's Gus Gus. I think this is our third time attending the brunch total now in the last couple of years, and we always have a good time. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it includes a, uh, a nice glass of champagne. Right. But it does not include orange juice or coffee or soft drinks, so those are uh, an extra purchase. And that that's kind of uh, typical with France buffets is that they don't usually include a drink. I like his, his stride there. He's, he's got quite the around. stride. <laughs> yeah, I guess they are not allowed to have uh, free refills in France. It's a law. Well, it only just came into law last year. It wasn't like that many restaurants were doing it anyway, but definitely not anymore. Look at the romance. After all these years, they still love each other so much. How nice. Mickey and Minnie to uh, to end the uh, experience at Inventions and our show, because believe it or not, that is another show. We're going to have so much more next week as well. But uh, From here at Walt Disney World and uh, Disneyland Paris. So thanks everybody for listening. Our sponsors, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. Again, check out the free dining packages, which will probably uh, not be available well, you know, you'll start getting to be hunt and peck. That's you right. Know, as now the is the goes. time. Now is the best <laughs> time. Also, allears.net weekly newsletter. They are, it's a free newsletter. It gives so much uh, information and tips and uh, you can get discounts from uh, different companies. So definitely check them out in our show notes. Lots more to come next week. We're going to have a very different type of character breakfast review. It'll be the Plaza Restaurant at uh, Disneyland Paris. Brand new. Just They just started this uh, just a few weeks ago. And we were at one of the very first, uh, first events there. But not only that, we'll have a couple of restaurants in the next two weeks, um, including the Polite Pig from Disney Springs, um, Plate Pig, I think we'll have in two weeks and next uh, week, Paradiso, Paradiso 37. Yeah. So, uh, so that should be fun. Anyway, thanks again for listening. Have a great week and we'll see you all next week. Have a great week.